All right, today I'm looking at the book of Ephesians and I wanna talk about this word natural. It's used a lot today, natural selection, for instance, in Darwinian evolution. But in this book, it doesn't talk about anything like that. It talks about a creator, a beshefer, and it talks about the natural condition of people who are under God's anger and the natural condition of people who are spiritually dead and the natural condition of people who need the mighty creator who created them in the first place to create a new self so that the old self dead in trespasses and sins can be replaced and this is done by the mighty Ruach HaKodesh the same one that turned Paul from what he was before a persecutor to what he is now an apostle the same one that raised Yeshua from the dead this mighty Holy Spirit wants to do a creationary work in you to deliver you from your natural condition, which is subject to the deceit of the devil. Amen. And we see in our country here in America uh, that the heathen whose thoughts are worthless, Amen. chapter 4, verse 17, are the saboteurs of our country, Amen. literally stealing elections, yeah, literally uh, leftist um, uh, you know, uh, Karl Marx is in hell, friend. If you want to follow, if you want to follow Karl Marx, if that's your Bible, I guarantee you, you're going to go to the same place that he went to. Amen. If if uh, if that's your Bible, then uh, you, you're really uh, in the dark. You may be an educated idiot, but still, you're in the dark, Amen. friend. It's not natural selection. It's divine selection. Amen. Listen to this verse. Paul didn't boast in anything. He didn't say, well, you know, I'm an apostle now. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with Peter and all of them. I'm a big shot now. No, he knew who had done it all. Amen. He knew what he was before. He knew what his old self consisted of. Amen. Here's what he says. Even before the world was made, do you hear that word made, i.e. creator? You know, forget forget um, a natural selection. It's divine selection. Even before the world was made, God had already chosen us, including himself, to be his through our union with Messiah. So you see, God was working way, way back. He was working... Uh, for uh, to bring about a new creation, and and this new creation is is uh, what what it's all about. And if you uh, study Revelation chapter five verse thirteen, you'll see that all creation is around the throne. And then when you study this book, you 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 see that uh, actually uh, God, who is the creator of all things, everything kept his, uh, you see, uh, where, where am I reading this from? Chapter 3, verse 9. God, who is the creator of all, all things, God has made us what we are. Amen? Amen. God has made us what we are. Amen. Chapter uh, 2, verse 10. I'm looking just at Ephesians right now. Uh, look at what he says here. God, he says... Now, you might say, yeah, I believe in God, but I, I don't believe in, in, in uh, uh, Messiah as you do because uh, he was uh, a man. No, look at chapter 4, verse 10. So the one who came down is the same one who went up above and beyond the heavens to fill the whole universe with his presence. Amen. Did you hear that? To fill the whole universe with his presence. Does that sound like just a man to you? No. To fill the whole universe with his presence. Amen. So Rav Shaul met him on the Damascus Road. He met the word in person, the word that was with God, the word that was God. And, and, and you know what? This is the one who made him a new person. Amen. 
This is the one who made his home in Paul's heart. And this is the one who made a new creation out of Paul. So that old things had passed away. He was not the same person. Now, friend, do not succumb to the devil's tricks. Because if you go along with the world, which is under God's wrath, uh, then you're going to find yourself in trouble. Because God's anger burns against this fallen world. Amen. This, If you want to use the word natural, the natural condition is under wrath. And God wants to take us out of that natural condition into a supernatural condition. Amen. He wants us to be born again. And, and, and you must flee from the old self and the old life and the worldliness. And, and, and you must find the truth. Here, look, it says, speaking the truth in a spirit of love. Chapter 4, verse 15. Do not get your truth from the reprobate who doesn't know God. Uh, it, says, it says that we must turn to the Lord. And, uh, and I, I fear for our country because the millennials are not, uh, are not uh, are going along with any of this. They're not bothering to read any of this. They're getting uh, their um, uh, creationism, quote unquote, from the devil. Uh, and, uh, and they're not, they're not uh, 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 at all interested in looking at, the, at these facts for the most part. But Rob Shaul himself is exhibit A Amen. to prove that he's telling the truth here because the power of the Holy Spirit was on this man. Amen. How could one little Jew go around the world and turn the whole world upside down Amen. and write most of the Breed Hadashah and, and do all of this when he was a persecutor. Amen. He, he was a persecutor. Amen. And then God gave him this book of Ephesians, which when you read it, if you have ears to hear and eyes to see, is very clearly a divine document, divinely inspired. Amen. Divinely inspired. And we're talking about the Beshefer, friend. The Beshefer. Don't let Charles Darwin take the creator away from you. Amen. Natural selection would not create an eyeball. Amen. If you know anything about an eyeball, you know that dumb nature couldn't do it. Nature is dumb. God is, is infinitely wise. Amen. And before he made the world, he chose the people that are going to be saved. And the ones who think that, they're, that, that they are choosing not to believe, well, they're in for a big surprise because God is way ahead of us. And he is not mocked. Amen. And his anger is real. Amen. His wrath burns. Amen. America is in trouble right now, my friend. Amen. America is in deep trouble. There's, it's a time now for evangelists to rise up. The, 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 there must be preaching everywhere. Today is the day of salvation. Before something really bad happens to our country, something worse than 9-11, we need preachers. And I'm praying that you will get your Bible open and read the book of Ephesians. Amen. Lord, I want to pray right now for, for, this, for this book, that people will read it, that they will see the Creator there the one who made everything, the intelligent designer, that this was not thrown together by dumb luck through random atoms and nature, but this was God. And that God created a new person named Paul, who was completely new from the old person. And then God empowered him to do great things, healings, and preaching and spreading the good news and writing these, these letters. And no one could have done this uh, without God's help. And God is, is, is showing us through this man that he loves everyone and that he wants everyone to come to salvation. He's not willing that any should perish, 
but also he is not mocked by the uh, reprobate. And, and and Karl Marx will find out in Gehinom that he wasn't so smart after all. And Lord, I want to pray that this country will not be, be taken over either uh, quickly or in time by Marxism. And I want to ask you, Lord, to have mercy on America and bring us back to the truth and may the truth open our eyes and may the truth make us a new creature. And everybody said, Amen.